Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I want to do a review of the book I just finished reading, which is Cousin Bet uh, by Honoré de Balzac. Um, so as you may know, uh, Balzac is one of my favorite uh, writers. He's my His picture is my avatar and almost every winter break I read a novel uh, by Balzac. And I've been saving Cousin Bet uh, for this time of the year and I'm glad that I did because having time off, since I'm a teacher and I have time off right now, it was an ideal time uh, for me to read this novel and to really just let myself absorb it and not try to read it too fast and not force my way through. And it was a really, really enjoyable uh, read. If you've never read uh, a novel by Balzac, let me, um, again, uh, kind of encourage you uh, to do so. Um, as far as French writers go, uh, he's not the artist that Proust is. He's probably not the artist that um, Flaubert is. But he is a great storyteller, and he has an, a really acute sense of detail. When you read a novel by Balzac that's set in Paris, he describes, you know, the exact neighborhood, the exact location, the streets the characters take, the kinds of carriages they rode in, the clothes they wear, what they decorated their homes with, what part of the government they worked for, you know, all these things are intricately described in Balzac's novel and it gives him a sense of of realism which I believe he's a member of the kind of the realist school of writers that that is is incredibly kind of um, enveloping and you can sink right into that world um, really quickly. Um, Cousin Bet is one of the two novels from uh, Balzac's uh, La Comédie Humaine um, which is considered, or comes to the heading of Poor Relations. I also have the other one, which I haven't read yet, which is called Cousin Pons. Um, and as such, it's, it's kind of an amazingly uh, in-depth dissection uh, of Parisian life uh, in the 1830s, in this kind of restoration period of France, I believe, in the 1830s, and uh, a really kind of unblinking look at the immorality that beset uh, the upper classes in in Paris during this time period and of all the ways and all the vices that these people could uh, find their way into and the contrast that Balzac draws between the immoral and the virtuous um, the lost and the searching characters trying to find their place in the the desire for money uh, and the links that greed would drive people to. It's also a story of revenge. Uh, the title character, Cousin Bet, seeks revenge against her own family uh, for slights from the past, but it kind of provoked by a really specific event that takes place uh, during the novel. So, plot-wise, the novel kind of follows the the Hulot family. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. It's spelled H-U-L-O-T. It follows the Hulot family. Baron Hulot is, whose who's, uh, name is Hector, is a minister in the War Department in the French government in the 1830s. He's married to Adeline, um, who was a girl from the provinces, who was noted for her beauty and whom he fell in love with. He is the brother of the Marshal Hulot, or Hulot, who is, uh, was, you know, a favorite of Napoleon and in some ways is the family's benefactor. Adeline's cousin is the title character, Cousin Bet, um, where Adeline is beautiful and refined and well-made and fair-skinned and fair-haired. Cousin Bet is the opposite. She's dark-haired, dark-eyed. Uh, her skin is more olive in complexion and in, in this kind of contrast between the two, uh, Balzac is going to make, you know, a clear contrast between their characters. There's a tendency, particularly I think in a lot of his, uh, in the main characters of his novels, to try to draw this contrast between the upper class, the wealthier, the more noble classes, and um, the characteristics of the peasants. I'll also tell you that um, I don't think there's any doubt that, that Balzac was an anti-Semite. And there, this novel struck me uh, as containing more than a few anti-Semitic um, statements, which, are, is, which is unfortunate. And if that's going to bother you, that would definitely be a reason uh, to avoid Cousin Bet. I, I won't defend his, his racist positions, but I will say he was a product of his time and he was a product of the culture uh, in which he lived. Anyway, back to the characters. So the Baron Hulot Hector is married to Adeline, whose cousin is Cousin Bet. 
and they're an, an influential family uh, from uh, the noble uh, part of Parisian society. But the Baron Hulot has spent all of his family's fortune on women. He has a taste for young, beautiful women, and he falls in love with them, and he gives them extravagant gifts, and he gives them large sums of money, and he essentially sacrifices his family's stability for that. At the beginning of the novel, his wife Adeline is just becoming aware of the financial problems that her husband's um, infidelities and um, womanizing have led the family to. She, by contrast to Hector, is an, an incredibly virtuous, pure woman who um, whose religious faith makes her completely devoted and loyal to her husband but that will be tested they have two children's victorin who is their son who's a lawyer and an up-and-coming member of the ministry and their daughter um, hortense hortense is a beautiful young woman um, who her mother is worried she won't be able to marry off because of the financial problems uh, caused by uh, the father uh, hector hulot um, in addition to that, there is a rival of Hulot's. His last name is Crevel. Uh, Crevel is much like uh, Hulot, only he comes from the um, merchant classes and worked his way up to wealth and was buying titles and positions for himself. At the end of the novel, uh, he is the mayor uh, of Paris, actually, and become a political um, functionary. In some ways, he and Hulot are the same, uh, except that Gravel is more driven by greed, he's more of a spendthrift, he's more careful with his uh, emotions. Now both Hulot and Gravel get tricked by the same woman, and as a matter of fact, that happens um, more than once, and this is the source of their rivalry. At some point, the Baron Hulot had stolen a woman, uh, a um, courtesan really, uh, from Gravel, and Gravel is seeking revenge against Hulot, which he will find. In addition, then, there is, in, there is Cousin Bet herself, and Cousin Bet is from the provinces. She's a lot rougher. She's not as refined, and she bears a incredible jealousy of Adeline, which she keeps hidden uh, until an event that unfolds in the novel sets her on this course of revenge. And what happens in the novel is that the, the young man that Cousin Bet is in love with who is a Polish count, whose first name is Wenceslas, is going to fall in love with another member of the Hulot family uh, and marry uh, Hortense uh, Hulot. Um, this sets Cousin Bet on a path of revenge and she will use her considerable skill, skills and her intelligence in an attempt to destroy the Hulots, to destroy Baron Hulot's wealth, to destroy the family's wealth, to destroy her cousin Adeline's uh, peace of mind and her happiness and to destroy Hortense's marriage. She enlists a beautiful young woman named Valerie, uh, and I believe her last name is Marnette, uh, named Valerie Marnette, who is in fact uh, a poor woman married to a minor official in the same department of government that Baron Hulot, Hulot uh, manages. And she is going to use Valerie uh, expertly to wreak as much destruction on the family as she can. She makes sure that Valerie and the Baron Hulot meet and that Hulot fa falls in love with her. She makes sure that um, Wenceslas, having thrown her, her over for her younger cousin Hortense, will fall in love with Valerie. And Valerie becomes this kind of courtesan um, extraordinary at various points in the novel, balancing five separate lovers. Uh, she's driven by her friendship uh, with Cousin Bet and her desire to help Cousin Bet exact revenge on the Hulot family and by her desire for money and place and society uh, and to be a rich woman. And this leads her into all kinds of love affairs and difficulties. And eventually, uh, it's going to lead to a very unpleasant end for her. Um, so. Without giving too much more of the plot of the way, I would just say that Cousin Bet has a tremendous amount of success in damaging the Hulot family. Um, but in the end, those who seek revenge, Crevel, uh, Valerie, well, I should say, those who seek revenge and, and money, Crevel, Valerie, and Cousin Bet, are the ones who will be disappointed and the virtuous will win out uh, in the end. Sometimes the virtuous went out through virtue. Sometimes the virtuous went out by resorting to unvirtuous means, uh, 
in an almost kind of a Machiavellian ends justify the means kind of a way. But the novel is, is to me, just, just simply incredible. Uh, I enjoyed reading it um, so much. And there's so much, there's so much in the novel. Um, there's so much detail about Parisian life uh, during the time period. Um, even within the courtesan class, which I'm just going to say plays a big role in this novel, even within that, that society, uh, Balzac has women who behave that way on, on different levels and display different amounts of virtue um, and different amounts of scruples uh, throughout the novel. And in that way, I think what he's kind of showing is in some ways that all levels of society are are open to vice and um, destroying themselves based on their uh, weaknesses and it's just that in perhaps the rich uh, the noble have more means with which to destroy themselves than the other social classes do so social class is obviously a big issue um, in cousin bet and in the novels of Balzac in general, and I think I mentioned to you, I, I just was talking about how the noble classes have more ability to destroy themselves, and it's tempting when reading a Balzac novel to see the poor uh, as the more noble class, but Balzac isn't that easy. Um, he has poor characters behaving nobly, he has poor characters being virtuous people, he has poor characters um, being terrible people. He has poor people, poor characters who are greedy and lustful, and all the other, uh, you know, sins and, and faults of humanity appear in all the social classes. And to me, I think that's, that's the most realistic thing, perhaps, about Balzac's novels, is that idea that, you know, human beings are frail and are open to all kinds of problems and are driven by all kinds of things, oftentimes towards their destruction, sometimes towards their successes. The other thing I want to mention before uh, I end this kind of review discussion of Cousin Bet is that in Balzac's novels, oftentimes I find that it's his female characters, and maybe it's just the ones I've read, it's his female characters that he admires the most. There are examples of male characters in his novels who he who admires, and there are always female characters in his novels who he disapproves of. Um, but his female characters are, are oftentimes the driving power uh, behind the men in their lives. They're oftentimes triumphant over men in their lives uh, who may intentionally or unintentionally being attempt to, uh, attempting to ruin them. Um, he, he is capable of showing um, women who are good, women who are evil, women who are, who are noble, women who are perverse. Um, it's just really kind of an amazing thing to think that Balzac had this kind of grasp, and an un unsentimental grasp, I think, in, in large part, on the human condition, um, and I think that's reflected in all his novels. I think it might be reflected best in Cousin Bet. So let me encourage you, if you've never read Balzac, to go out and read some uh, Balzac's work. And Cousin Bet is a is a long but pretty good place to start to get a feeling for how he how he writes and how his stories go. I will give you one word of warning. Um, uh, if you're going to start reading a, a novel by Balzac, oftentimes his novels start off very slowly. And it feels like things are never going to get going. And oftentimes I find myself only being able to read 15 or 20 pages uh, at a time. But then you'll kind of hit that moment where you've absorbed the backstory and the, the setting in which he's placed his novel. And you are thinking about these characters all the time. And it almost becomes, they're not mystery novels, but they almost take on that quality where you have to figure out or you have to know how are these people going to behave? What's going to happen? How is this problem going to be solved? And he's really good at pulling all those fibers and all those strings together to make a complete picture uh, in the end. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about my review or Cousin Bet or Balzac in the comment section.